Hey guys, Tucker here, co-host of the Portland Real Estate Podcast. Before we get into this week's show, I wanted to let you know that we're currently looking for more projects. So for any of you guys that listen to the show that may be an agent or otherwise that have a property that you're looking to sell, we'd love to hear from you. Obviously, we're looking to purchase properties that are maybe not best suited for the retail market or maybe they need to be redeveloped. So we do renovations and we do new construction so we could buy an existing home that maybe it smells like cigarette smoke, maybe it hasn't been updated in decades, maybe it's got some fun functional issues, some problems like that, or maybe it's just in an area that is best suited to take the house down, partition the lot, maybe build a couple new homes, or just build one new home in its place, and anything in between. So if you guys out there in Listener Land have anything that would be best suited selling to a development company like ours, we'd love to hear from you. You can go to our website, which is ttmdevelopmentcompany.com, and when you go there, there's a Contact Us tab. Click on that, and you can send us a message, and we'll get back to you shortly thereafter. We'd love to hear from any of you guys out there that have a property like this, and hopefully we we can do a deal together. This is the Portland Real Estate Podcast, your number one place for anything you need to know about the Portland real estate market, along with in-depth interviews from our local real estate industry experts. Now, without further ado, here are our hosts, Tucker Merrihew from TTM Development Company and Steve Nassar from Premier Property Group. All right, everybody out there in Corona land, welcome back. This is episode 112 of the Portland Real Estate Podcast. We, uh, we're recording a, a show for you guys today, and it's, it's a new version. We're going to do it in video format here. We're going to load it up to the uh, master's group, thanks to Joe. And we're going to start doing some live shows as we move forward. But before we get into all that, I got to welcome my co-hosts. First of all, Mr. Steve Nassar, and of course, the man behind us being in front of you right now, Mr. Joe. What's happening, guys? Hey, hey, How's hey, going, hey. Tuck? we, Welcome we've back. been off. We haven't been together for what? 10 days. And it feels like it's been two years. <laughs> it's a, it's a brave new world that we're in. And, uh, as we talked about earlier, beer 30 starts, I think at about 10 30 AM now. So it's <laughs> definitely weird. <laughs> yeah. There was that whole socially acceptable, you know, afternoon, you know, 12, 12 sharp was when it was acceptable in, in, in the pre Corona world, I think. I think that got, went out the window along with a lot of other things. <laughs> I think we've gone long enough now that it's uh, it's starting to sink in, which is yeah. why that drinking hour has been pushed up so much. But yeah, it's getting uh, whew, it's a little it's a little tough, man. I'm I'm envious of you guys because you don't have kids to chase around. I know Joe's got a kid at home, and it's a little different because I think they're like a grown person that can feed themselves and you know go to right. bathroom by themselves and all that stuff, but. Holy hell, doing this whole thing with toddlers that have nowhere to go every day, that is, uh, it's like SEAL, uh, SEAL training for uh, parents. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, but there's got to be an element of bonding with them, right? Like, that will last you a lifetime. Like, Steve, you haven't had kids of your own. I can tell. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yes, there's moments. Everything, uh, parenting is about moments. <laughs> Anyway, that says the guy with other kids. Yeah, that aside, (laughs) what's what is going on out there in the world with you guys? Oh, okay. Well, um, I mean, I'll say on a positive front, it feels to me like we are establishing the new normal. Um, there was in in these situations, and there's similarities to 2008. Tucker, you and I were both in the mortgage business in 2007 and 8. Do you remember where every day you would come in and lo- the, the loans you thought you could do the day before you could no longer do? I do. Do you remember there was actually a website you could track the companies that crashed and burned? Yes. I what that was. Implode.com or something. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you would come in to work. I mean, you would literally, you're like, okay. I, I can't do this. I can't do this, but I can still do this. You'd get on the phone with a client. You'd pre-approve them. You'd call the realtor. You'd go, okay, this guy's good to go. Let's, you know, he's, he's motivated. He needs a house, blah, blah, blah. And you'd come in the next day or maybe a week later, whatever. And no longer was that loan available. And they had changed all their guidelines instead of 10% down. He needed now 20% down. He didn't have 20%. So you're, you're doing damage control. Sometimes they're already in contract. In some ways, the past few weeks in our world have felt that way. Like, okay, I can't do 
open houses, but I can do this. Or I, or for a while there it was, okay, we can do open houses, but we got to have some, you know, wipes and we got to have some sanitizer and we got to keep people a couple. And, and it was just constantly changing. Um, it feels to me like we have established a bit of a floor with those changes. Not to say there won't be more, but they're not coming as fast and furious at us. I don't think, um, <clears throat> I truly don't think at this point they're going to shut real estate in Oregon down. I think Washington did that and they, they, they created a whoops scenario where they realized all these people who were mid transaction or maybe they just closed on their, their, their um, sale of their home and were looking to buy something, staying in a hotel. Now they're sheltered in that hotel and their world is just um, a, a, a disaster. They realize that the real estate needs to keep happening. People need shelter. People need to access the equity in their home via a sale. Not everybody can refi and get them their cash out, whatever the reasons are for that. Maybe there's not enough equity. Maybe they don't have the credit scores, whatever. Maybe they don't even have a job anymore. Um, so Washington kind of the opposite of what I was saying at the beginning of this was, you know, we were coming in every day for a few weeks and, and something new was being taken away from us. I thought it was really positive late last week or actually over the weekend where Washington brought something back. Okay, we took this away. Now we are giving it back. Obviously with strict guidelines, obviously needing, needing to be taken very seriously. But that to me was really comforting because I'm like, okay, the, the likelihood that Oregon's going to take this away now is much lower. And so now we know the rules, okay? We, we have to be incredibly careful. We need to work with the right clients, only the uber motivated, the ones that have a scenario they really need to address. Ideally, I mean, pr vacant properties are really, really desirable right now from all vantage points. But um, so we can kind of start, we can start going through our business and through our clients and triaging. Okay, who should, who needs help? Who doesn't? Who's going to just sit on the sidelines through this? Who actually has a, a serious scenario? And we know that we're starting to wrap our heads around the, the rules and the, um, the ground rules of what we can and what we can't do. And they're not changing as dramatically as they were for a while. What do you think, Joe? Well, if you look at the last two or three weeks, um, it's, it's really volatile right now because we had rates completely spike. I think they hit as high as six and then they fell again. And there are some loans out there, you know, that start with a two, 2.99, which is what you pay for a, a car. That's a car loan rate. That's ridiculous. Um, there was also a spike and fall of uh, business protocol in Washington. You know, it was a uh, stay home, stay safe. You, you are not, an essential business we're closing you down the numbers in washington are a lot higher than they are in oregon for the virus so um it was short-lived though it uh, was closed and then it, it was back up the latest thing and this also is volatile is the government loans va fha there's rumor that they're going away they're not necessarily going away however uh instead of a uh 585 credit score you now need a 650 so to get into those loans you need uh higher credentials are i actually heard 680 joe um i was talking to my lender yesterday and she said she is starting to see um fha requiring a 680 credit score which is crazy oh, wow. isn't it tucker you remember how fha oh, yeah. we called it the subprime of the last downturn <laughs> well i mean we all know what they're doing right i mean they're, they're basically a scared shitless of first payment defaults right yeah you know, funding paper that won't be able to perform and so how do they prevent people from taking loans that are in theory available you you raise the criteria so much that people are like what like so i mean that I think that will work itself out as this problem continues for, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, things are changing every day and the mortgage market, I'm sure, you know, when you had those discussions yesterday, the mortgage market, I've been reading all about it. I mean, it's a mess right now. The it servicing is. companies are, you know, they're scared. Um, you know, they're going to need a bailout to float, you know, payments, mortgage backed security investors, um, margin calls. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So 
yeah, the, the, you know, the driver of our business is the financing. And although there will be financing that goes through, it's definitely getting bottlenecked and squeezed right now. There's no question. Yeah. Keep going, Joe. Sorry. Oh, that's about it. Inventory is still incredibly low. And um, actually, our first topic addresses inventory and how they have sort of modified the rules for uh, COVID-19. And then our, our showing protocol has changed. So all of this has happened in the last couple of weeks. So it's going up and down, up and down. I don't think anything is going to be permanent. It's just this is that figuring out phase that we go through until this has moved past us and then it's trying to get back to business as much as normal as possible. Joel, I got a question for you before we dive into the topic. I know you were um, doing a showing this weekend because we chatted on the phone. Um, what uh, the people that you were showing, was their situation like they have to move, they have to find a house or was it more of, you know, they want to? Uh a little bit in between. It was also a vacant house. Uh, he showed up with these latex gloves on. We didn't shake hands. We didn't hug it out. I mean, I just showed him the house and we're done. And uh, uh, I mean, life doesn't slow down for real estate, right? It's like people need to buy and sell for whatever reason. I mean, if it did, we would all buy low and sell high all the time, but that's not the case. And they really do need a house. Um, and I, it was a kind of a calculated risk. We stayed apart. It was vacant. So pretty yeah. easy. Yeah. Well, it's good to know there's people out there doing it. So that's why, yeah. that's why I on, on my team, we're really, we're really changing protocols. Um, so we had a, uh, we call it a sign call, right? I took a listing live, last week and we actually got an offer pretty quick over asking price one offer we thought we might get a couple norm in a normal market we probably would have got a couple got an offer went pending next day we got a sign call on it and the gal said you know she was asking some questions about it she was talking to one of my team members and um it went well they said they're in an apartment they need to find a place they're pretty motivated um and uh so we set up a Zoom call for yesterday. Um, I probably would have set it up for the week, but he actually works for Intel and um, he has kind of a crazy schedule. So we set it up for Sunday at 2 p.m. I connected with one of my buyer's agents, my team member, and the two people. And we just went through, we, we went through their search and we were using Zoom just like we're on right now. It's, it was awesome. I could click share screen, pulled up, pulled up a map, talk through the areas they're looking at. Um, we talked a little bit about our systems, especially as they pertain to this virus. Um, what we talked about is like, look, you know, here's, here's kind of the new world we're in. We're going to send you homes via the search, check them out, go on Google earth, Google, Google street views. If it really seems, look at the photos, look at the marketing. Um, if it really seems to check a lot of boxes, get in your car, drive by, see if you like the location. And if that's the case, let us know we will schedule, you know, and it, it's hard to, <clears throat> at this point, it's hard to have hard, fast rules for everything. Different, different listings are going to have different situations. You know, if there's really crappy photos, maybe we'll go to the house and do a virtual tour where we FaceTime the house to them. If there's really, really good marketing and there's a great video and there's a 3D Matterport and, and they already have a really good sense of the house, and it's owner occupied, maybe we will um, schedule so we only go there once and only bother the seller once and make them leave and then use incredibly strict protocols of social distancing, of obviously just being incredibly careful. We would request all interior doors be open, all lights be on so that literally we would have sanitizer. What we've been talking about on our team is like having Lysol wipes wiping down the lockbox, opening it, using the key to open the door, wiping down our hands, never really touching anything in the house, never being close to the client, and, um, and then being in and out and not sitting there having a 30-minute conversation about the house. See the house and then say, let's go back to our homes and Zoom and talk it over. And then on Zoom, you can pull up the comps. Um, 
you can go to RMLS or, or Cloud CMA or whatever tool you use and go, okay, this house is nearby, it's on the market or it's sold for this amount. And, and you, can, you can do some pretty cool stuff with this technology. Stuff that I predict will stay with us for our lifetimes. I think a lot of what we're learning now, I think we'll be using for many years to come. You, if that goes well, then you're writing an offer, you're docu signing it. I mean, I think we're all pretty familiar with that part being virtual. The other thing we're doing that's different is we are really, really pushing hard to, to have nobody at the inspection. Only the inspector at the house, no sellers, of course, no buyer, no us. Then for the last 20, 30 minutes, we'll do a Zoom call with the inspector. He can walk around the house. He can show the problems. He can talk them through it. And so really, it is possible to, to show a house once to a buyer, write an offer, and um and then and never have to meet with them more than that once possibly and never have to go to the house again so i mean we're really focused on limited you know efficiencies and um limited contact and and um i think we're all getting our heads around it and i i encourage our listeners and i think we're not done innovating i think you know we'll get better at this as we move forward but there are transactions that have to happen i mean it, there's a, there's a whole movement, and we'll go into that here in a little bit, where people are starting to shame agents who are, who are helping people who need to do transactions, and um, I just don't feel that that's right either. Well, let's jump into it, because I think that's a good lead-in, because uh, obviously you guys are showing houses. It's interesting to me that the change, because we brought it up on the show, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, you know, about open houses and what should be done afterwards to wipe it down. And then the, the progression between two weeks ago to now to how you guys showed houses this weekend or would show houses. Um, you know, it's, it's a very fluid situation and obviously people are adapting on the fly and in a good way. But um, yeah, let's jump into it, Steve. I think that's a good topic to start with. Yeah. So <clears throat> over the weekend, um, I posted a thread and there's been a few of these. Joe knows this better than I do. I posted the Washington governor's memo to, to masters and said, good news, Washington has reversed their stance on real estate, acknowledging that there are people that have to do transactions, both buyers and sellers, buyers who need shelter, sellers who need money. And um, I said, this is positive for our industry. It's also positive for Oregon because I think Oregon will learn from the mistake Washington made and not slam the door on this. Now, I'm the first to tell you guys that we are taking this, me as an agent, my company, and I think most of the industry that I'm, I'm encountering, I'm not seeing bad actors per se that I'm, I, I haven't necessarily seen somebody that's just snickering and going, oh, I'm, it's business as usual, but there may be those people. It's a big, it's a big business. It's a big industry. Um, so we're taking it seriously. Well, in that thread, um, <clears throat> there, you know, there was obviously a lot of, there was a lot of likes and there was a lot of positive interactions, but there was some, some haters that came on one lady, um, <laughs> one lady accused me of, of not caring about the lives of people and said, um, another one said, well, you look healthy, but, but it's not just about you. you um, this is about, um, others, in, including at risk people, which we understand we're not questioning that. But, but they were, there's, there's, there's a spectrum of people that are trying to take their opinions and force it onto the masses, overriding the government's already statutes and opinions, right? If, you're, if you feel so strongly about your opinions, maybe you should go into government and help them legislate. Don't let the government come out and say, okay, we deem real estate is essential. There's, there are people that need to do transactions enact these very strict social distancing guidelines and then and then other people in our industry saying nope they're wrong i'm right nobody should go out and do anything um you know <clears throat> the other thing that i was thinking about with this that 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 really bothers me a little bit is <clears throat> every person in this mess has a different path they have a different journey. They're having a different experience. There are some of us, and I feel pretty blessed, to be honest with you, and I think you guys probably are, are similar. I feel pretty blessed. I've got, an, I've got a home that's comfortable. 
I've got a good living situation with who I live in that home with. I'm still, I, I have some savings. I have, I still am able to gainful, be gainfully employed, right? So for me to start blasting people who don't have that, there's, there's people out there that maybe lost their job. Maybe they're by themselves. This would be, by the way, this would be a terrible time to be completely isolated and by yourself, almost like in a solitary confinement. There's people who perhaps they're at risk. Maybe they have a health issue. So they are having a different experience and, and, and we should be empathetic to them. But on the flip side, they should also be empathetic, those people, and not assume that everybody is in the same boat. Um, so we shouldn't take the opinions that work for our situation and try to broadcast them and force them upon people who maybe are in other situations. I think it takes a lot of tolerance and understanding. And um, <clears throat> Joe's had some great posts about this. I mean, go, Joe, what do you have to say? Well, yeah, so two of the topics um, that we're talking about today, uh, one of them was the elephant in the room. And what that post was about is <clears throat> you have the people that are stay home, stay safe, and the people that are, hey, financially, I need to go out and make money and there's no middle ground whatsoever. And there was some name calling and uh, part of that post, the elephant in the room, is there's this fight about the people that say stay home and I don't want idiots running around negatively impacting me when I'm here staying at home. They're out spreading it, spiking the curve. Um, I'm flattening the curve. And then there's people that say, hey, I have people that are in the midst of transactions and they're going to be homeless themselves. That can't happen. I'm being responsible and safe. So that's either side. And there's no discussion with, oh, I, hey, you know, I, I hear you. I don't agree with you. And here's why. There's none of that. It goes straight to, uh -uh, I know you are, but what am I? You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. And there was I had one agent talking about respect each other. There was one agent that kept saying, shut up. That would be his comments, like <laughs> shut up, <laughs> which is not something you see on Facebook very often, right? Like, um, I think this is a precursor of what is more is to come though, because you got to remember people are cooped up. People are going to start <clears throat> losing their damn minds here real soon. And it starts to come out when you become a keyboard warrior on, on you know, social media. And that happens even without this whole thing. But generally, Joe's forum has been pretty, you know, nice. There's been some outlandish people and they get the boot. But generally, you know, everybody's pretty nice to each other, right? So, but with this, the shut up comment, I don't know if I ever saw a shut up comment before this whole thing started. So, I don't know. Maybe that's part of it has to do with the fact that people are just they're starting to get a little cabin fever, even though they may be firmly in the camp of stay home, you know, flatten the curve. It still has to affect you mentally, right? So I don't know. Maybe some of that, Steve, is just them like, ah, this sucks, but I'm going to take it out on you because you're doing something that I don't like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I, sometimes I leave some of the where it starts getting catty. It's not necessarily a bootable offense, but sometimes I, I leave it there and then tell everyone, hey, children, please behave. If you're going to be in the sandbox, don't throw sand in the eyes of the other children. You know, we're all here to better ourselves. Let's not, you know, take it down to that level. Well, I, you know, I, I just, think, go ahead. <clears throat> I, what I would say is let's let the government and our real estate associations make the rules let's follow those rules and if we have problems with those rules work with those associations work you know push back there but don't judge people that are following those rules we've never done that as an industry right <clears throat> if orea came out and says you know you have to present all offers or if um the uh if if nar has in the code of ethics you, you need to do this or that we don't go on masters and go, no, no, that's wrong. They're wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. So why are we doing that today? It's, it's been an ongoing thing. Um, so in, in all sales, they, they like to say mm -hmm. that nobody likes being sold. People hate being sold. However, 
last election year, people lost their minds. Whoever voted for Trump, I'm going to unfriend you. If you didn't vote for Hillary, you're an idiot. Whatever it is, people lost that, that uh, responsibility to listen and respectfully comment. They just went straight to like preschool, kids screaming and yelling. And, and it's like anyone who tries to sell me hard on their views by belittling my views and puffing up their views, I'm probably going to be more convicted in my own views just because I think that person's an asshole. So people <laughs> who think that works, it does not work. And in masters, it gets your ass blocked. So, you know, people can be as aggressive <clears throat> as they want. You get one shot at it. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mess up the integrity of the group because somebody's on a scaffold shouting from the top of a mountain, <clears throat> the old town crier, I got I to gotta make this known. That is the last message that you made known on, on our platform if you don't adhere to the rules. And I just want to point out to our listeners, <clears throat> so that did happen to me over the weekend. I mean, somebody, I, I, had, I, I was making a very, um, a very benign comment with, and, and I welcome anybody to go find that thread and, and, and any reasonable person to point out where I was being crossing lines that we aren't supposed to cross. And somebody just came scathing at me and saying, you, you, you don't have a, you don't put a value on human life. You, um, you, you seem hell, blah, 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 blah. And I did bring it to Joe's attention and they are no longer, those got deleted and they're no longer, they're blocked from masters. So the, po the point there is, and what I want to encourage our listeners is when you see those bad actors in that regards, you know, really crossing the line, bring it to Joe's attention. You can do that several ways. Um, one of them is just to flag it, right, Joe? Just flag it and say inappropriate comment. <clears throat> Flagging's the easiest. Um, I know people think that I am on masters all day long, and actually, I do have a real full time job aside from masters and a family and everything else. Flagging it when I do have the time, if I check out for six hours or eight hours, it's at the very first thing I see something was flagged, and then I can decide whether to keep it, block them, how, how to move forward. That's one way, that's probably the best way. You can also private uh, message me if flagging it isn't enough and you need to give a little bit of dialogue. And when there is a blockable offense, like the person that was shooting arrows at you, it allows me to not only block them from the group, but I can remove everything they posted, all of the people they recommended to the group, um, everything they commented on for the last seven days. So all of that is gone on your thread. Um, no one will be able to find what she wrote um, or he, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a point of you want to get rid of those bad comments too, because you're going to have people jumping on the bandwagon and either shooting flames at her or taking her side of it. Okay. It was a female. You got me. Um, and I just want those off the page. It's, it's, let's deal with the problem at hand and not the way people go about discussing the problem. So if they're blocked, normally all of their posts and comments for the last week are gone. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, I, I really think this should be said though. I mean, there's really an overarching issue here, right? There's, there's camp human life and there's camp, you know, economic activity. And just because you have feelings in both doesn't, or one or the other doesn't mean you can't have feelings in both, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think people need to realize that, you know, we've had to lay some people off. I know I just got off the phone with a buddy of mine who owns, uh, you know, a brew pub. He laid off 72 people. I mean, shit is getting real for those people. So for people to just sit on their high horse and say, you should do nothing, they probably haven't had those conversations, you know, <laughs> to let people know that they don't have a job right now, right? Which is not a fun one to have. And so, if you can operate within the rules, like you said, Steve, uh, you know, and be safe. And that's why I wanted to kind of talk about, okay, what kind of precautions are you guys taking now versus two weeks ago, which is a lot. There's no reason why people cannot continue, you know, some form of economic activity. Because the reality is this, right? Whenever the shutdown happens, unless we have a vaccine, the virus will still be out there, right? It will still be there. We will have to live in a world with this virus. 
And so we're going to have to figure out what's the new normal. What's mm -hmm. the way to conduct business, to allow economic activity to go on uh, with this virus circulating? And I, there's going to be a new normal, whether that's wearing masks and gloves and a bunny suit everywhere we go. If you feel like you're at risk or you just feel like you want to, so be it. But right now, the new normal is basically abiding by the rules that you stated, which I think is completely fair. So, you know, it's, it's fair to have an opinion that human life, you know, people over profits that camp. It's fair to be in that camp. But it's also fair to say, look, there is some major economic challenges that we're going to have to overcome by this. And those people that are just trying to continue to, to, you know, forge forward and not let their business crumble in front of their eyes, if they're doing it within the rules that are being set up, there's nothing wrong with that either. I, I, that's exactly what I was trying to get at too, Tucker. Thank you for saying that. Like I, those people who are making those overtly strong opinions about every, every real, realtor should stay home, despite what the government and our associations are saying, I challenge one of them to acknowledge that they are in an uncomfortable living situation or that they don't have adequate savings or, you know, varying things going on like that. In other words, do you think they would still feel that way if they had just sold their house, it closed three weeks ago, and they're staying in the Comfort Inn? Do you think they'd feel that way? No, of course not. <laughs> I mean, so, so don't force your situation on the masses. We get it. You have a comfortable situation. Not everybody is in that. There are so many varying dif different experiences happening out there. Try to be understanding to the others. Yeah, others I mean, we're floating. I'm floating people right now to keep money in their pocket so that they can continue to have a decent life, even though our activity level has dropped significantly, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's my situation. I mm -hmm. do have some savings and I can do that and I can pass that goodwill on. But some people don't, and they got to continue forward and figure out a way to feed themselves. And let's be honest, the $1,200 check that people are getting is not going to do a damn thing towards you know, longevity being in a good financial standing. Now, maybe they get unemployment, and maybe they get that kicker check on top of it, and it kind of balances things out. But there's going to be a two, three-week, four-week period here where people, they're hurting, you know, and they're trying to figure things out. So you just got to let people operate within the rules that are set up you know, to keep everybody safe. But more importantly, we're going to have to figure out a new normal at some point because two weeks from now, three weeks from now, four weeks from now, the virus is still going to be there and we can't sit inside forever. So we're going to have to get used to the idea that there will be a new normal on how we operate. So, you know, that's my two cents on it. And, and I'll also add, the last podcast we did, I did think the government was going to shut real estate down. If you, if you go back and listen to that one, we had just seen that happen to California and I was pretty confident that that was going to happen to us because they were deeming in California that real estate was not essential, the realtors anyway. <clears throat> and I was ready for it. And I would have, and I would have accepted it. I would have accepted it. I would have said, okay, the government's saying that the associations are saying that time to time to, to, to shut down. They didn't say that. And, and we're thankful for that because in their view, they realize the importance of providing shelter and, and, and um, access to their equity and, and, and uh, while well, at the same time being very careful, so let's accept that. Let's accept that the powers that be who make the decisions, including the associations that we, that we um, work under on the real estate side, have said you can operate, be careful. Um, so I think, I think we kind of addressed that. You have anything else to add there, Joe? One last thing, though, just because I think I find this incredibly entertaining. For <laughs> anybody that goes online and blasts people for going out and doing like you're doing, if, they're, if they so happen to be the same people that go to Costco and stand in line with 500 other people uh, and touch every product on the shelf and put it on their cart and then let the box person touch every product and put it in their box and then take it to their cart, like understand the hypocrisy, right? Mm -hmm. Just understand that just because it's okay to go to one place, it doesn't mean what you're actually doing isn't the same thing as another, right? So Exactly. I love that. I love that. You're viewing food as absolutely necessary and essential. Not you, those people. But then you're saying someone else's shelter isn't. And that's just because your experience right now is you need food, but you don't need shelter because you're okay with your current shelter, right? That's the hypocrisy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, what's funny on this uh, <clears throat> whole topic of the stay at home or do what you have to do, no middle ground. Uh, I didn't realize at the time, but 
I made a, a video and talked about, you know, digital is going to be our new platform. And this was about a month ago. We've been in lockdown for like two weeks, but this is about a month ago. And it's like, if, if you have a listing, get professional photography, get a virtual tour, get video, get drone, make it so simple that the person doesn't even have to go see the house. I mean, every year I sell a couple houses where they're out of state and it's just going through the, the photos that we have. I walk through with a, a phone or something. I mean, it can happen. This is the new normal. Like right now, uh, you know, you could watch Netflix with your, with your friends. You know, you could connect and all watch the same show together. You could play online poker. You could have Zoom calls. You could play Cards Against Humanity online. I think everybody knew about letting the digital platform help you, but we weren't forced into it. So a lot of people kind of said, hey, I like seeing people face to face. I like doing it this way. I like going to the office, but it has changed. And look, we buy expensive stuff off of Amazon all the time. We don't see it in real life. We just read about it, look at the photos, read the comments, boom, you buy it. Some $500 widget shows up at your house and you're happy as a clam. The same can be with real estate. You can always drive by it, make sure there's nothing weird about it. You know, it's not next to a tire burning factory or something like that. And then, you know, maybe you can do a walkthrough, one quick walkthrough. All the rest of it could be done online. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I, be I believe we can still be productive in keeping our outside as a minimum. And that, that I just talked about, is far, far, far less intrusive than everybody collecting in the empty toilet paper aisle in the store and going to Costco and touching the carts and everything showing a house, spending 15 minutes there, vacant or occupied, sanitizing, and going back and doing it all digital, looking up the information that's relevant. Really, there's very little in real life stuff we need to do other than making sure that what you see is what you get. Um, so I encourage everybody to step up their digital game. There's a, a post that uh, just went live in masters about uh, an hour ago, less than an hour ago, talking about digital platforms, you know, please have a virtual tour, have the photos, do all this stuff. I think their tone sucks because it's, it's this condescending, I'm ranting type of a tone, but the message is still the same. That should all be done by everybody. Step up your digital game, step up your virtual tour game. This might be the new way people uh, preview houses and maybe for the next few months to come. Yeah. You know, the other thing, Joe, you made me think of that I've experienced out there, and I really, really would love to see this change is I'm, 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 I'm tired of people pointing out only the problems. Say, here's a problem, but here's a solution that would help us with that. There was uh -huh. a post I made last week stating, and it was, it was something I was observing in real time in this market that we're in. I was like, okay, sellers don't really, sellers are, are leery of having people in their homes. Buyers are, you know, scared of going into a, a, an occupied home. So doesn't that mean that the vacant listings are the king right now? Doesn't that mean they are the, the upper echelon? They're safer from the buyer standpoint. They're safer from the seller standpoint. There's probably already, you know, 30% of the market that's out there that's vacant. Um, as soon as I posted that, within minutes, there was people going, no, don't, don't fall. Don't buy into that false sense of security. There's still germs on there for three days, blah, 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 blah. And, and I, I, at one point I said, okay, thank you. Good input. What's the solution? You gave us a problem. Are, help us craft the solution. Are you saying maybe a vacant property needs to be, and I'm not, I'm not saying this is my thoughts. I'm just like, instead of, instead of shutting down every idea in our business so that we screech to us grinding halt, 
How about saying, hey, I just want to remind you guys, those germs can live there for two days. Might make sense to do a thorough cleaning between every showing and spread the showings two days apart, okay? Not saying you're right, but hey, now you gave us a problem and a solution. And you just see that constantly. There's people, they just want to throw the roadblocks up with no, no guidance on, hey, here's, here's a challenge, here's the bridge around it. And I'd love to see that change. Well, yeah, here's a solution for you, right? We have vacant listings. You know what we do in the private comments? House is cleaned after every listing. So I personally have been going through two of them and wiping them down with disinfectant wipe and cleaning them. Um, you know, everything that normally gets touched, right? I, I can't clean every single yeah. service, but everything that normally gets touched in a showing people, you know, I know generally what people want to touch. They can't help themselves to touch things like that. Right. And so put it in a listing on a vacant li or in the private comments on a vacant listing and just let people know. There you go. Problem solved. Right. For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Steve, uh, I don't think that, uh, looking on the dark side of, of the comments will ever be rectified in our current society. No. Yeah, um, I know. No. It's, Wishful thinking. It's, it's the low hanging fruit. So this is, it's, it's kind of a different topic, but uh, so my kid is in the army. She's at West Point in New York and we went to the army Navy game, big rivalry. It's a good humored rivalry. Um, and we're there in Philadelphia. And one of the commentators said, you know what is just fabulous about this football game right here is, you know, here is a game where all of the athletes on the field would lay down their lives for all the people in the stands. So, I mean, when you sign up for the military, that's kind of what you sign up for. So then the tweets come in. Well, the Marines do that too. And hey, the Air Force does that. And all the people you didn't mention, like, had a problem with it. It was mm -hmm. just an innocuous, positive thing to say, but what mm -hmm. you didn't say, uh, you know, brought up these flames. It's kind of like if you give someone an adorable free puppy, they'll bitch about, oh, they wanted a chocolate colored one and they have to feed it and train it and clean its poop and all this other stuff. It's, I don't know why people immediately go there. And so. It's not why? everyone, Joe. It's, it's not everyone. It's, it's, it's not segment. everybody. Yeah. And it's, it's just, everybody. and there's, there's telltale signs to that segment of the population. Well, yeah. with that said, I think this is a good segue because yeah. the next post, there's a lot of uh, people that are, you, you know how you have that person that you just love to hate and you just can't wait for their demise, like, or like something bad to happen to them. And, and you just want to tell everybody this next one is, um, <laughs> I think this is it for, for you guys in the realtor space with the uh, Zillow, the open doors, the eye buyers. So maybe roll into that, Steve, because I know you love Zillow personally. So maybe, maybe you'll be on the other side of the coin on this one and uh, you'll be the guy blasting some, some not so nice comments. Yeah, and, and I, what I meant by that, Joe, is there's, it's, there's a segment of the population that are glass half full and there's a segment that are ha half empty. And I'm going to tell you, it's shit like we are going through right now that separates them and their experience coming out of this will be very different. Now, I'm not, and I'm not saying we should be head in the sand optimists. That's in, that's in no way, shape, or form what I'm saying. But know the realities and the challenges of the situation and focus on the opportunities. Focus on the positives that can come out of it. And um, those who do that, let me just tell you right now, this situation will be the great equalizer in our business. Like this, it's a, it's a massive change like this to any industry, not just ours, that really, it, it takes the old guard and all their advantages and makes them zero. And it takes all the new, the new people who had disadvantages and makes them zero. And everything's kind of an even playing field because we're all adapting. We're all changing very quickly. And those who can do so and, and stay positive and, and make those changes will do well. Those who are just focused on the problems and everything they look at, it's like that saying, um, when, when the only tool you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? When the only tool you have is the problem identifier, everything's going to be a problem, right? So um, 
Let's move on to yours. So solution minded. Is, that's the uh, that's the theme here. Be solution minded, right? We're gonna have to operate yeah. in this new normal, right? This is yeah. normal, so be solution minded. All right. Yeah. So your favorite company, Zillow. Here is a positive. Who's ready for a silver lining? Who wants some good news? Remember when iBuyers was everything everybody was talking about and all we all everybody in our business was consumed was with was they're gonna replace us, they're gonna replace us. Well, guess what? They haven't replaced us and they have all stopped buying. Zillow, Redfin, Open Door. By the way, um, let me tell you a little bit of my experience with what's going on. Um, Zillow reached out about 10 days ago, maybe give or take, and told me and all other agents who advertise with them, um, hey, we're going to pay half of your next month's spin. Okay. Why are they doing that? Well, because they completely pivoted away from the iBuyer program, which is where they had put all their eggs in that basket. And guess one thing about pivoting. When you pivot away from something, you better have something to pivot back to. And so Zillow is coming back to us hat in hand saying, hey guys, you're important to us. Uh, um, so we'll pay half your spend. Um, that's, their, that's what Zillow is doing. Here's a prediction I have about Open Door. <clears throat> um, Open Door was backed heavily by a, a bank out of Japan called SoftBank. We've talked about that on the show. SoftBank had problems already with WeWork and Uber and several other several other investments long before the coronavirus came along. Um, last week, one of their companies that they were backing filed bankruptcy. I'm predicting. Within 90 days, we're going to see Open Door filed bankruptcy. There's just no way. They, they, ha they were not profitable before. N there's no scenario they're going to be anything close to profitable now. And, and that's probably a good lesson for all of us. It's you never know when an oh shit coronavirus is going to come along. You never know when some m massive geopolitical or something's going to come along. So it's always beneficial to be profitable and be able to adjust your business so that you can stay alive. When you have a business like Open Door had, where the only thing keeping them alive is just an influx of massive capital behind you, when something like this comes along, boy, you are in big trouble. Yeah, well, SoftBank has made some bad choices <laughs> over yeah. the last year or so. But uh, that's interesting that they I didn't know they were the principal backer there behind um, Open Door. But you know, more importantly than that, I mean, Zillow, I guess, well, here's a question for you. Are you going to take Zillow back like, uh, you know, a, a spouse that had cheated on you previously and now comes back and says, they I never left work? Zillow. I did. I did. Um, I did drop my spend um, significantly. I, I, I'm currently spending probably a third or fourth of what I was doing a couple of years ago. Um, so I, as of right now, I'm not going to change anything with that. Um, I'm calling them out on it. I mean, you know, very, very publicly calling them out and, and saying, I, I, you, you wanted to replace us. You vocally started saying you could do what we're doing. The second storm clouds showed up on the economy, you left everybody in contract high and dry. Did you guys know that? They pulled out of all their contracts. Now, yeah. to be fair, I, from what I read, I think they're trying to be nice to people and they are, they are giving some concessions of sorts. I've, did you hear that, Tucker? Yeah, they're paying people to basically walk away without being super pissed off and just being sort of pissed off. They're, they're giving up their earnest money and I think a little bit extra. Yeah. And, uh, in, oh, and they're also saying, hey, if you want to list with a realtor and sell, we will pay your closing costs, your seller closing costs. I think it was an alternative. You could take yeah. one or the other. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they're do I, I think Zillow's trying to do some stuff, but, but they definitely, they definitely are being, um, you know, karma's getting them. I mean, they, they came into this industry and um, recently were very vocal about how, they could replace the realtors. Well, guess who's cleaning up their mess now as their, their contracts are, are being voided. Us, we realtors are going in and, and helping those people. So, well, here's the thing though, is that, and I'm curious your guys' thoughts on this because they basically have said that they're pausing their operations, right? But they're backing out and they're paying people or they're saying they'll cover their selling costs if they hire a realtor. But looking forward then, you know, open door is probably done, right? If SoftBank's backing them, you know, SoftBank's probably not going to be able to convince all their investors that they're going to throw money at 
this company that's going to try it again at some point in the future. But does Zillow try this again? Or is this so much of a you've broken consumer trust? Like, can you restart this part of your business after doing this publicly? Is, is that even possible for them? Or is that off the table, do you think? It's a great question, Tucker. It's a they'll, great question. I don't think we know the answer today. I don't think we know the answer today. You know, if Open Door has no revenue coming in, backers like SoftBank are circling the wagons and not giving them money. I don't know that they're going to have a choice. I think it's quite likely in, in the matter of months, they could just be filing bankruptcy and closing down. And then I question whether they ever come back into the market, especially since they never did fully figure out how to make money, nor you and I, Tucker, have said many times, we don't think they're ever going to figure out how to make money. So they... I, I think there's a lot of uncertainty there. With Zillow, they're not, Zillow's not going to go away. They're, they're going to pivot back to the premier agents. They're going to work with realtors. And um, man, it'll be interesting to see. They, they too may in the future go, you know, we, we weren't really close to being profitable on that whole buying and selling homes. And uh, we, we left it in a crazy fashion. So I doubt they're going to be excited to get back into it. But Time will tell. It'll be interesting. What do you think, Joe? It's, you know, the, it's the same cycle. Like Amazon uh, didn't make a profit for the longest time. And now we have like one of the richest persons in the world uh, that owns it. And it's like, it's like shooting uh, Bin Laden. You know, you shoot him and then another psycho emerges. So if it isn't Open Door or Zillow, after three months, um, or however long this takes, there will be some form of iBuyer out there. And they were very transparent that they don't have to make money right now if they can change the way real estate is conducted. So there will be some form of iBuyers in the future. This didn't kill it. This was a temporary thing. And then in two, three four, five, six months, they'll have another little email blast because of COVID-19. We did a cease and desist and all this other stuff. But now that it's safe and it's healthy to do so, we're back at it. So somebody will be there. If not the, the players mentioned some other entity, I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. I, and I think you're right. And, and to be honest, I mean, the business of iBuying has been around forever and it will continue. It's just whether or not it's going to be the big corporate machines um, that do it or have an arm that does it. So we'll see, but I'm interested to see in the, the, you know, consumers outlook on them moving forward. It, it may not matter as you said, Joe, but uh, for the time being, obviously it's uh, a lot of, I told you so is going on out there. So, all right. Well, good show today. A lot of good topics. Um, as I said in the intro, or do we have another one? Do we have a, I think Joe has a, do we have a parting topic here that you wanted to mention, Joe? Uh, I think it was the play nice one. <laughs> yeah. Which we kind of wrapped well, in. But. So I had, I had two posts and it's basically the same post. One is let's respect each other. And the other one was the elephant in the room, which talks about the stay home versus the, I, I still got to work. Ultimately I'm beating the same drum, which is, if you go to masters, we're there to share, learn, become more knowledgeable, ethical, responsible, techie, cooperate better. Um, let's not make it like just a, any other chat room where people are throwing flames on people. And basically the root of both of those are you can have a respectful disagreement online without taking it to the lowest level. So we kind of already talked about it since they were both the same, but I encourage people, especially during this time, uh, you know, after you're done watching uh, Tiger, whatever it's called. Tiger King. <laughs> yeah. Once you watch Tiger King, you're going to have a lot of time on your hands. So let's just try not to, to be mean to people online. Let's not treat each other like Carol Baskin. That's right. Take it out on <laughs> Carol Baskin, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think those are good words. Uh, one last thing I'll mention. I said at the beginning, we're going to start streaming some shows live here on Masters. We've got a, uh, a guest that uh, you all know well. 
that uh, hopefully we'll have a show this week, uh, end of the week. Um, if we do, we'll make sure to put an announcement out that we'll be going live in Masters with that. If not, it'll probably be next week, but um, we're hoping that uh, we can make that happen. But uh, with other than that, any parting words, gentlemen, on our first video show here for uh, all the folks out there? No, thank you. Thanks for joining us too. And let's, uh, let's move forward. All right. Let's, let's find that new normal and, and be successful in it. Next time I'm going to have a fireplace behind me and a swimming pool. So yeah. there yeah. you go. <laughs> we'll work on those backdrop pictures. <laughs> I just want to point out to our listeners, Joe cracked a beer open at 11 a.m. I love it. <laughs> that was a root beer. It was a root beer. Right? Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'll be up for debate. But all right, <laughs> folks. Well, this is uh, Portland Real Estate Podcast signing off. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for listening to our show and make sure to tune in next week for another great episode of the Portland Real Estate Podcast.